Hello everybody, it's JB, and welcome to a behind-the-scenes look at my current setup for how I film ASMR. I probably will set up something like an Amazon storefront, so if you do want to support the channel, I would get a commission if you buy through those links, but everything I'm about to show you, I believe, except for the microphones, are all things that I personally bought myself and use because I like them. But I just wanted to let you know I will provide the links so it's easy for you to find them, and then obviously the benefit of commission if you do see anything you like. But that's not the main point of this video. I am sharing slash making this uh, one in hopes that some bit or piece of information can help you or inspire your own setup, and two, just because it's kind of interesting to peek. Before we start, one of the biggest things I would like to say is that if you are an ASMR creator or an aspiring ASMR creator, you do not need any of this stuff to be successful and to make amazing ASMR. I've been doing this professionally for over seven years. I've accumulated it over a long period of time, using the funds that I've gotten from YouTube's AdSense and sponsors, etc. I also picked things that I personally would find useful and that best support the content that I want to make, but there are infinite styles of ASMR, and this setup may be right for me, but maybe not for you. So pick and choose whatever information you find helpful or just sit back and relax. This is such an incredibly niche topic, I'm mostly just excited to geek out about it because I've been dreaming of this setup forever, it seems like, so let's look at the ASMR cart. Before we get into the cart, let's talk a little bit about how we got here. Or you can skip to the timestamp. Problems that I wanted to address with building the studio and specifically the ASMR cart itself Cables, mic stands, tripods, light stands, tables, backdrops, stuff everywhere. I'm sure a lot of you can relate that it's genuinely hard to work in an environment that doesn't put you in the mindset you're supposed to be in. Relaxed, creative. I was in my film room, sweating, fighting for my life, tripping over cords, and then I was just supposed to be all. So I wanted to just get everything together off the floor. Second issue, I did not like my teleprompter. I was using the Padcaster, which just, I don't know if they've updated it since then, but I'm going to put them on blast and say this design is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I'm gonna grab it. It looked like this, and you would use the ring that fit your camera lens size, screw it on, and then you would have to put it down onto the ring with a lot of force onto your lens, so then like my tripod would be like, or the camera would fall off, or the ring kept falling off. I think this broke like my lens shape. Anyway, as soon as you got it on, precarious as heck. Now if you want to put your phone in here to do the teleprompting thing, you had to pull hard as Zeus just to like get your phone in there. And so like all this pressure, you're like pulling down on this. Once again, this will just snap off my camera. And then, what is this? Is this supposed to hold my phone? This right here? I'm kidding. So then my phone is slipping, sliding. over it had to be solved also with peace and love the app that went with it was like i have nightmares so i get my phone in there finally i'm like i can't touch it everything's gonna fall off i can't edit the text i can't edit the speed so most of the time i actually would end up just taping a piece of paper underneath for lines or anything like notes and then i would have to try not to make it obvious if i needed to check them or I would end up having to make a lot more like edits than I wanted to. Number three, 
I would constantly need to change my setup. And I feel like that's still kind of true. But each video, I had to puzzle piece, maneuver everything around, backdrops, trying to hang things from the ceiling, needing to hang things on a wall. The apothecary video really comes to mind. The potion seller one, that shelf behind me fell so many times. It was horrible. It was horrible. And I had to keep that set like up for a good two weeks too. It was very precarious in there. My green screen also was not like able to be far enough away. That's the next thing I'm setting up in here. No time to talk about that. We, we gotta go. The next issue that I was facing, I couldn't see what I was doing. So the tiny viewfinder, I'll give you an example. So this little viewfinder was like the only thing I could see. I don't know. It was like it wasn't heinous, but when you're like this far away, when you're trying you can't see if you're in focus, you get closer, it doesn't help because now you're not standing where you're gonna be standing. And that means I would constantly miss details or I would have to spend a lot of time doing test shots so I could upload it, see it on a bigger monitor, and then back and forth, back and forth, and then just like try to never ever touch the camera again by accident. I was also very guilty of doing viewfinder peeking. I still am. Additionally, I couldn't hear what I was doing. <laughs> How did I do this for so long? I don't know. But with all the cables and stands, the mixer had to be pretty far away. It couldn't take up precious table space because I had like not a lot of space. So I just put it on the floor. If I plugged headphones in to be able to monitor, it would make bumping sounds. If I touched the headphone wire, so I just had to hope for the best instead. Now, not only could I not see or hear what I was doing, but no one else helping me could either. So if Ben or my mom was ever in the room during a video with me to help, especially during the more complicated ones, they were <laughs> lovingly banished to the corner and had to just be quiet and just sit there. And that sucked. So After I finished filming a video somehow, um, my post video workflow was not my favorite. So I would take the SD card from the camera, take the SD card from the mixer, and bring them up to my desktop upstairs because it was too loud to keep a computer in the room. And so like that process wasn't the worst, but I wanted it to be smoother and give me less of a chance to get distracted on the way. My next issue was finding things and having things handy. I did keep all of my props in my filming room, but uh, a lot of my tech and things were spread around the house. I wanted to be able to keep a lot of stuff closer and obviously <laughs> thought it'd be nice to be more organized in general. Not related to the cart, but the last issue uh, that really made me want the studio was my poor <laughs> beloveds, Ben and Satine. They had to be completely quiet while I was filming. We would have to turn off the AC or heat while I was filming too. And then on top of that, even if they were being quiet, anything would interrupt my videos. Wind, storms, planes, deliveries, neighbors mowing lawns, construction, appointments, people coming to the house. So all of that together, it was really frustrating to film a lot of the time. And when I'm in a frustrated mood, I was worried I wasn't producing my content in the mind frame that I wanted to be in, so cue the studio and cue my cart. So I'm really excited. Thank you guys for bearing with me through all my years of chaos. I don't think there will be less chaos, but we're gonna try anyway. But it's time to talk about the cart. A few videos that really inspired me um, were DSLR Video Shooters, name of the channel, uh, the Ultimate Video Studio Desk Setup, and the 
entire video studio on one cart. Those two videos I watched several, several times. Um, they both gave me a ton of ideas to work off of, and I was able to combine a lot of those with my own needs. So, thank you. I started testing while the studio was being built, um, and I was very proud of my first prototype. Still not great, but it all worked out, and now we have the cart. Let's start with the base, the main event, the cart itself. This is a cone carts small three shelf cart with high density pre cut foam. That's what you see, like right here. It was $340 when I got it. I really wanted to get a production cart that was built for attaching equipment to, but I think because legitimate production carts come with other features that I don't need, like being lightweight, being able to fold up, etc., they're all like $3,000, <laughs> which I thought was just wild. So I obviously wanted to see if I could just make this one work instead. The most important modification I made to it ended up being adding a piece of wood to the top shelf. I got it cut at Home Depot and drilled underneath to keep it in place. I didn't want to have to do this for some reason, so I tried a lot of other stupid things first, but I'll save you the time and the money. Just get a piece of wood and drill it in. I know it's annoying, but there we go, you know? piece of wood. You just need a piece of wood. Then I covered the wood with felt. I will probably make this more permanent in the future. It's kind of just like on there right now. Um, another upgrade I'd like to make to the cart, which should be fairly easy. I mean, I don't know if I need to show you the wheels, but there's wheels down here. I feel like this would be pretty easy, uh, but pretty tedious because I think I'd have to take everything off of the cart, is replacing the wheels that it came with, with better ones. We have two wheels that swivel, but these two here, they, they do not, they're just fixed. I do figure someday I will make that change, but you can kind of see just a few inches off the ground, and yeah. The beauty of the cart, you can kind of see it right now, there are only two kind of thick cables that are running from the cart, and those are the only ones I have to worry about. This red cable here, and then this cable over here, which is a super duper, super duper extra cable, I would assume most people would not have to worry about because they won't need it, but we're gonna get to that soon. But yeah. floor is much, much cleaner than I'm used to. Next, we need a camera. I've upgraded cameras two times over the years. I started with the Canon Rebel T4i, then the Lumix GH5, and now I've finally made the switch to my beloved Sony FX3. This is a cinema camera, and I use the Sony FE 24-70mm GM2 lens with it. It gives me the option to zoom in and out, however, I'm already planning to switch this to a fixed lens for this setup once I lock in kind of my standard so that I never have to adjust things unless the video is atypical, which happens a lot, to be fair. <laughs> I also use a protective lens cover, that's the Sony MC protector uh, in the size 82 millimeters as well as the Tiffin Gold Diffusion uh, one-half power filter. I'll show you an example. The Tiffin filter gives a little warmth and fuzziness to my image, which is something I actually have never really had in my videos in the past. My lighting has never been the coziest, I feel, and that's something that I really wanted to work on. I actually made the switch to Sony because of the incredible focus and autofocus options. Hello over here. Right now I have it on center fix, so we'll just focus on whatever's in the center of the image. 
I move around a decent amount in my videos. I'm constantly holding things up close to the camera and things like that. So I really needed something very quiet and very accurate. That was a big struggle that I had with the Lumix GH5. It's have a lot of focus. It's terrible. So it's very important to me that the focus is fast and effective. I've been really impressed so far. I'm shooting with another Sony camera right now. I just, I really like it. It's great. Look at that focus. Wow. Oh, back again. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I'm so impressed. I do shoot in 4K, and the FX3 does have a fan in it, which is a little troublesome, or at least I was worried, for ASMR, but honestly, it is not that loud, and it really has not been as much of a problem as I thought it would be, so happy to report the fan really has not been an issue. Let's take a look at the tripod. Originally, I wanted to have the camera on a monopod so that it wouldn't take up a lot of surface space on the cart. So you can see this tripod does end up taking up most of the room. But after a ton of experimenting, a lot of wasted time and money again, this tripod configuration ended up being my favorite option. So let's take a little look. The tripod itself is the Gikoto X25 Defender. It's honestly amazing. One of the best things about it is this, the ability to turn it horizontally. I used to use this a lot for bird's eye view shots, but here it's useful because it extends the camera out physically, kind of past the cart, which is what I need for my videos most of the time. I need to be able to get close to the lens. That's something I do all the time. And then you'll notice this guy here. That's a new friend. And this helps me make micro adjustments to the height, the distance, the extension, and the angle of the camera. So I could very easily, after figuring out what tension I wanted, be able to pop this up and now it's like a little bit straighter I don't want to move it too much because I finally got it right I'm gonna move it back but you can see there are multiple points here and also it turns uh, this way so I can make sure that the camera is straight I just like being able to do micro movements and just be able to grab things manhandle it move it so this is the Edelchrone Flex Tilt Head version 3. Again, I've been very happy with this so far. It is $99, which honestly is on the less expensive end for a lot of Edelkrone products. Some other stuff is... Whew. I actually have a separate Edelkrone product hiding right here in this setup. And that is the Edelkrone Quick Release 1 V2 universal quick release system. You install it like a plate on the bottom of the camera and it makes it very easy to take your camera on and off. I'm trying to be very gentle because of all the cables. Like that, you can see the bottom. So you gotta just screw that in like a plate and then these mechanisms on the bottom will screw it in to the threading here. Rather than doing this under the plate or flipping the camera around a million times. So I really, really uh, used this a lot when I first got it. That little guy is also $99. Um, but I might link a similar one for less on my Amazon storefront. I got this one at b and um, I haven't used the one on Amazon, but I feel like the one I found is essentially the same thing. I will say this thing is 
awesome if you tend to have to take your camera on and off your tripod or make different setups frequently. However, with this camera in particular, this FX3, I have stopped needing to take it off the setup due to a few factors, so this piece is actually a lot less important for me now, but I will say it's very nice to have, so I'm still going to use it if I have it, you know what I mean? Alright, so let's talk about why I don't have to take my camera off. In the past, I've used one camera for all of my shooting for the most part. I dabbled in using a second little camera uh, or my phone, but I was never really happy with the quality and I would usually just have to film multiple angles multiple times with my GH5. I decided it was finally time to get a multi-cam setup. So while this Sony FX3 is my ASMR cart camera, I actually bought two more Sony cameras to use. I'm not going to go super in-depth about them, that would probably be a second video, because that is my sitting setup. So hiding behind the teleprompter in the middle there is a Sony FX30, and that's like a essentially a step down from the FX3. I use that as my streaming camera and my face camera for sitting videos, and then the a7S III, which is what I have been using for the other parts of this video. I just swapped over to the FX3. This Sony A7S III is my catch-all camera. It is my bird's eye view camera, or any sort of second angle camera, the mover you know, and I also take it with me when I go traveling because this is my photography camera as well. So if I ever take any pictures, like we were just taking some merch pictures today, this is really great for photographs. So this is my camera that moves around with me. I do have different lenses too, but I will not go into it right now because we have to go back to the cart. The second reason I don't have to take my camera off is I have all of the cables that I need already connected to it and cable managed. This is my favorite. Uh, I love this. First, we are using a dummy battery. It's the AC power adapter kit. I don't believe that Sony actually sells these. So I have to use third-party ones, but honestly, they've been great. I've purchased two different brands. I don't notice a difference between the two at all. Both work very well. So because the camera is constantly plugged into power, which is over there, we'll be talking about that, um, I never have to worry about my battery dying or charging it, which is sublime. Then I have a cable to get my footage off of the camera. It's just a USB-C type cable, and that again is kind of cable managed down the cart, and you'll see the HDMI cable right here as well. That's a topic for a few moments. So that again, uh, the white cable, cable managed down the cart, and it rests over on a table. So when I'm done filming, I can just go <laughs> boom and footage up. I actually set up my own network drive to store my content on rather than use Google Drive, which is what I have been doing for the last six years. Highly recommend doing that. It was a pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie to you. Thank God my tech friends are nice. Thank you so much. And that would be a, another whole separate video. But it's essentially a massive external hard drive that my editors can also access from around the world. Here, boom. Uploaded my footage. I just take the cord out with one hand. No, two hands are nice. And I can just stay there. And I take my laptop along the merry way. These MacBooks, uh, the Air, they don't have fans. They're completely 
silent, which is great. Very easy to just close open, very light. So I've been uploading through my MacBook. I do have a wired connection, but my Wi-Fi has actually been pretty good, so I haven't really needed to use it too much. Now, once again, I have been taking advantage of these luscious new cameras, and I am indeed shooting most of my footage in 4K now, which allows my editors a lot more flexibility in coloring, as well as cropping, green screen, keying, etc. So, I upgraded using a CF Express card, which to put it simply is a very high speed upgrade from an SD card. It captures just gorgeous 4K video, no worrying about dropped frames or anything. And one day my children will laugh in my face about how much these cost. In the other slot, I have a backup SD card, just in case um, my CF Express card gets full during filming. I don't have to stop and replace the card. So far, this has been pretty good as well. So, do I need the CF Express card? I don't really know. I am experimenting. But let's go back to my laptop setup that I had right here. Because that's about it for the camera, I think. All right, so back to this table that I put my laptop up on. Don't mind how tall it is. Right now, I still need to figure out exactly what I want to use to hold this table. This is actually a tabletop from Tether Tools. I have a bunch of stuff from them, and I really like them a lot. This is one of the pads on top, and I have a bunch of these uh, surfaces the Arrow series in various sizes, and that's how I build uh, temporary tables, and I'll use different attachments on the bottom depending on what I need. Right before I switch to this sort of tall clamp guy, I was using a like an articulating arm that I really liked, but the attachments that I had to use to get it to clamp onto my cart kept making the whole thing unstable and you just don't want to put your laptops on a loose surface, but I'll, fi I'll find something. And, uh, the tether, tether Tools has, like, little cup holders and stuff you can, you can get. <laughs> so, honestly, it's not too bad. It's a little tall, it's a little silly, but for now it's been working pretty great, and it's not, it's not going anywhere. Now, the last thing on the tripod are a few small sandbags to keep everything sturdy and balanced. These are two five pounds here, and then on the bottom we do have a ten pounder. I'll get you a better shot. Girl, I don't know if you can see this, but most tripods do have like a hook on the bottom, and I have a ten pound sandbag slung over that. These are called boa bags. I really like them for their shape. You can see the two five pound ones up here. They're just really easy. Not as, not as bulky as the sandbags that I got uh, early in my channel. And uh, they come filled. But you can get other sandbags or weight options. There's a ton of them online. Okay, so that is it for the camera. Are you still here? Crazy. I started with a Blue Yeti, and then I mainly used Rode NT1s for a few years. Um, but I found that the Rode NT1s, they're really fragile, and they would need to be replaced a lot. Then I was very generously sent a pair of the AKG C314s. I absolutely fell in love with them, and then finally I got sent the AKG 414s, and these have been my little, my little babies ever since. So thank you again so, so much AKG for sending these to me. Kind of insane. They are my favorite 
favorite mics ever and I was just obviously very lucky to be gifted them so I did want to make sure that y'all know I just got I'm very very lucky now to treat these babies right I am using Mogami Gold XLR cables and god I don't know these are so worth it to me I think maybe one Mogami cable in my lifetime has had an issue with it. Maybe and that it was inconclusive. So if you want to treat yourself and upgrade Mogami, you have my heart. Now, if you wanted to completely recreate this setup here, you would need about an eight foot long XLR cable. Uh, these are a bit longer. I'm pretty sure these are the 10 foot cables. They only come in like, they don't come in every single foot option. They are cable managed down a little bit here and across boop, boop, to the mixer. Hi, we're recording, but we're going to talk about the mixer later because before we get to that, we have to talk about these. So this is another one of those I tried a ton of things before finally succumbing to an option that really should have a less expensive option, but by god, I love it so much. And it's so absolutely, so absolutely worth it to me. These are the OC White Limited Edition Pro Boom Ultima Gen 2 Ultra Low Profile Adjustable Mic Boom with 18 inch riser. Black and red. Why do I love these so much? The footprint. The precision. The effective shock absorption. Okay. Look at that. All the places. Oh all the ways up down left and right oh my god do you, do you understand what this means for me for dancing with my microphones here's to the ones that dream because i got the risers these also can go like up and down no, it's not that easy. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I am. But, um, you just have to, like, unclamp this guy. And you, like, manhandle, shove it up and down. So, it's not, like, it's not, it's not perfect. <laughs> but Mamma Mia. I genuinely want to not love them as much as I do, but I love them so much. Having so much control over where my mics are is a huge deal to my setup, and when I compare these to using my old mic stands, it's just so, so, so much better. And these also clamp to the cart. It's like a big, like a wide base clamp, and that's how they're attached down there. Like so. <sighs> you little brats. All right. We down to our little mixer van. It's about that little, I guess. But this is a pretty new friend, too. I have been through three mixers slash recorders, the Yamaha MG-10XU, and the Zoom Livetrack L8, and then this one is the Rodecaster Pro 2. There are a few things so far I wish that this Rodecaster had, but my other mixers didn't have those things either, so I don't know. I could see Roadcaster getting those features in the future. For example, I often switch between setups, and I wish I could save, like, sound profiles. So, but all in all, this is probably my favorite mixer that I've used. There are some features that aren't um, necessarily, like, necessary for me. These pads here, this is used for like sound effects or applying 
applying effects to your audio or playing sound effects themselves. So it, it could be more useful to, you know, the people who this is targeted to, live streamers, podcasters, etc. So for me personally, I feel like there's like a little bit of wasted real estate, but in general, I just, I really love how this mixer makes my audio sound and how relatively easy it is to use. I wouldn't say it's like insanely beginner friendly, but for my setup and what I've been doing, I feel like I, I really enjoy the ease of use of it and the sound that it gives my audio. And those are probably my two major concerns when recording ASMR type audio. But all right, coming out of the back here, what do we have plugged in? This is the power. This is the USB for uploading. Um, when I'm ready to transfer my footage, I would just press this button and click on transfer mode, and then it shows up on my laptop on the same little table where I get my footage. These here are my two mics. I'm speaking into one of them now. We have another one over here that probably won't be used for this particular shot. And then this, <laughs> this is where we start getting into the super extra portion. But this mic isn't being recorded, so I don't use a Mogami XLR with this one, okay? Not necessary. These spoiled babies. Here is where I plug in um, headphones. So this is where I would plug in my headphone option. I'm just gonna say I don't have like a favorite headphone for monitoring. I don't know. I, j I haven't found the perfect ones yet. Should probably get custom in-ear monitors, but I, I haven't. I just prefer on or over ear headphones, but th those aren't always what I want on my head when I'm filming. I really like these that Pokemon sent me. Like, God bless them. They are open back headphones though, which isn't great for when I'm recording because I'm always afraid of like the sound leak getting picked up by the mics. And then also back here is the micro SD card that the roadcaster uses, but I never have to take that out because that's how I transfer the audio to my laptop, which consequently is going directly onto my network drive. So I love how this is holding up. I have it attached to the front of the cart. Again, I used to put my mixer on the floor, so this is much, much better. I can see when I'm standing and filming how long I've been recording. I'm sitting on the floor right now, but if I were standing filming a video, you know, I can press buttons easily. I can adjust things easily. I can see my levels or if there are any issues. It's just a lot better. And I don't step on it by accident. All right, so I want to talk about how I attach the mixer to the cart. It's a little bit dark. I don't knew how well you can see this, but here is the clamp that um, attaches it to the cart. This is from Newer, and it has a bunch of 3 8 and 1 4 holes in it for you to add things to. And here in the back, this articulating arm here is from Pearstone, I think it's called, and that's so I can make adjustments on how the mixer is situated on the front here. This is something that I wasn't initially planning on doing. I didn't really think of it as an option on purpose, so when I tested it out on a whim, I didn't know how much I would love it. This was like kind of a, a happy accident as Father Ross would say, but I love it. I really thought that I was going to need a separate table for the mixer, but having it attached to the front of the cart has been amazing. All right, so the next important step in my setup was fixing my ability to 
see. I needed something better than just a viewfinder. This field monitor is the Lilliput HT10S. It's a 10 inch high bright on camera touchscreen monitor. And after calibrating it, I find the colors to be really, really accurate to what I end up recording. Hi there. Um, there are some features like connecting the monitor to a camera to control it that don't work with my FX3. I do wish I could use those, but all in all, just having a bigger monitor right next to where I'm shooting is huge. This saves me so much time, so I don't have to shoot test footage first to see it enlarged, and it also saves a lot of potential mistakes. I'm going to remove the little um, table that I showed you earlier, this one here, just so you can more easily see the monitor setup, and then we'll put it back. Alright, so at the very bottom here, I have this attached to the same clamp that my mixer is attached with, and then after that, there's the upside down Manfrotto extender, and then you come to the top here, and then attached to that is another Manfrotto arm. This is the Manfrotto 2 section double articulated arm with camera bracket. That's the camera bracket. And then the monitor sits on top. On the back here, my little cherry cherub, LOL. But on the back is the two cables. It's just the power cord and then the HDMI cord. And that is what the camera feed is coming in with. So that is my monitor in the back there. Now, the last thing that's quite obvious on the cart is my teleprompter. Whoa. This is also something I will likely change the setup of because right now, if I go ahead and tilt you down and show how this is connected, it's attached to the same clamp that my mixer is. However, I don't like this because this kind of attachment right here enables it to become loosened if I move it back and forth, which I do. I'm going to need something more like this guy. The clamp and the base of the stand are completely like welded together, and that's, that's what I need for this teleprompter setup. But... The arm that's attached, this is the Tether Tools Rock Solid Articulating Arm. I really do love this thing. It's just not in the right place in my setup. Then that arm is attached to an open ball head. And on top of that, I have Frankenstein <laughs> two teleprompter kits together, along with a bunch of little bits and bobs here, adapters and things to make it work. We make it work. It's, it's really ugly, but I love her. All right, so this big chunky part here, this is the monitor. We bought that separately. There you go. This part down here, this was from a discontinued, it's not discontinued, standing teleprompter from prompter people. I believe this is supposed to hold like an iPad. I originally thought that the teleprompter would not be able to be connected to the cart. My plan was to have it freestanding in front of the cart and just roll it away. I was afraid that if the teleprompter was connected, that when I touch the teleprompter, because I do ASMR videos, I often am like literally touching the camera. I thought that it would shake the camera too much, but it's not the case. I finally figured out that if I just clamped it on like I do now, it was good. And that was, that was a very exciting day for me, and I am not being sarcastic. So, with this big prompter people teleprompter, the glass part that came with it was huge, and I'll show you. This is what it came with. Like, that big, compared to that, too big, too 
too big. <laughs> too big. Because it was so big, it would cast a huge shadow on me if I got close to the camera, which, again, I often do because ASMR. So I wanted this piece to be as small as possible. And this baby is small. It is the Glide Gear TMP75, which is supposed to attach like to your webcam on a computer and hold a small phone. But not for me. I decided to take that part and put it on this guy. However, because the glass is so small, there's less of like a, a target for the image of the monitor to hit correctly so that I can see it. I needed to make sure it had enough height for the monitor to correctly reflect into it so I could see. So we used little adapters and this little mini ball head here. The monitor I'm using here is another Lilliput one. This is the Lilliput A11 10-inch monitor. It's not as accurate as my HD 10S, the one I showed you up there. I bought this a while ago. The price is not that- I just looked it up today. The price of this is not that much different than the one up there. So I would recommend the HD 10S over this one. But again, I bought it a while ago, maybe even before the HD 10S even came out. So waste not, of course. Also because I'm using it to reflect an image into a teleprompter, the color accuracy is not my biggest concern here. You could absolutely get away with using a cheaper monitor with less features. I will say I did have an even cheaper Lilliput monitor I was hoping to be able to use, but it did not work with my setup. And I gotta give it to both these monitors. They are both silent. Yay! So when I turn this on, and the camera is on, we can see the feed of the camera going into this monitor. And it gets reflected right into this glass. My camera lens is right behind this glass. Really cool, right? And then on the side, you can see my other monitor <laughs> showing me in much more accurate detail what this camera is picking up. I'm sorry, I'm probably making all of you so sick. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Okay. So if we follow this down here. Do, 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 do. To the back here, we have, well, the power, of course, and then this HDMI cord. So this HDMI cord goes down here, all the way to here, and connects to an HDMI switcher, because I show more than one thing on this teleprompter. But we will get to that in a second. What's important is this HDMI cable that's going underneath. And around the side of the cart to this HDMI splitter. Alright, so let's talk about the splitter. This cable down here is the one that's connected to my camera. If you follow this cord all the way up, it goes up the leg of my tripod and all the way into the camera. We're getting that direct feed. Awesome. So, we plug that camera feed into this splitter. So, you can pretend the image is in this little box, 
and we're sending that image to three places. They all get to see the same thing. We have the teleprompter monitor, which is the one I was just talking about. We have the main monitor, which I wrote on this, pa this little piece of tape, but that's the field monitor up there. The one I used to see the image. And then this is our super duper extra guy, which again, not time to talk about yet, but if you follow that down, it actually goes all the way down the cart and into this red cable. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. First, I want to take you back to this splitter. This HDMI cord goes up into our teleprompter our teleprompter monitor, I should say, and I can choose what the teleprompter monitor is showing me. This left button is showing me the camera, but if I click this, it goes to this, <laughs> and this is connected, it is connected to an Apple TV. Keep the remote right here. We'll turn it on. And then if we go and look at the teleprompter monitor, I'll show you what we see. So when we come back up, we now see that the feed has switched and now I'm seeing what the Apple TV is playing. And I see that in my camera. So, while I'm filming, I could be looking at whatever the Apple TV is playing. This would be a very good way to sneakily watch anime while I'm filming, but that's not what I use it for. I use it because I can cast anything from my MacBook or my iPhone right onto the screen. That means things like scripts and my teleprompter app. So, I'm going to start screen mirroring from my MacBook and I can now see my monitor inside the teleprompter where my camera lens is right behind. So let's start. Boom. Hi, I wrote this beforehand so I wouldn't ramble. I think it's working. It's too fast, I'll slow it down. So much easier, I can scroll back up, start again. This would also be good for if I was doing a video like reading comments, a video where I had to react to something in time, like if I were filming a twin video, or a video where two characters are in the same room at the same time. This would also be fantastic for live streaming, so I could read chat without looking away from the camera. I think it's super neat. I stole it from our TV at home because we never watch TV. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. I never write in LOL, so I'm so sorry. Otherwise, I would probably recommend getting an older version of the Apple TV because you don't really need this to be in crazy 4K or anything. But that's how that works. Okay. I think I genuinely covered all of the all of the main parts of the ASMR cart. But are we done? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm going to show you all of the accessories I have floating about on this cart. Then we can talk lights. And finally, the studio manager setup on the other side of that window. Okay, let's come down to the second layer of the cart. On your right, you will see my little camera tool. This buddy is great for loosening common adapters and attachments. And then behind here, I keep, um, all my must-grab items, so I'm going to pull those out, give you a quick inventory because I can't see. First we have the 
phone that I use to whenever we're, I'm recording with an, a phone, if I need something very small to film with, the iPhone cameras are really amazing. We have a small box cutter tool, it's like a ceramic tool um, to open packages and things. We've got way too many pairs of scissors, but I always lose scissors and I just so happen to have found all of them. We have a pad of paper and pens in case I need to write anything down quickly on actual paper. We have a plug-in USB light. This light is obviously super thin and it's something that I bought for streaming and repurposed for my filming. It fits really nicely into like my teleprompter setups if I need to light my face from in there, which is like sometimes, not all the time. I have a lint roller that's almost empty. I have to put a new refill on it because my clothes are always covered in dog hair. And I have a backup iPhone charging cable. I'm putting things back in arbitrary places. <laughs> Next on the shelf is this little Lazy Susan. Let's take it out. I'll actually put it in the light this time. So everything in here is still a little random. I'm still figuring out what needs to be in here, but we'll go through it. We'll go through it anyway. This is my white balance card. It's not an official white balance card, it's just a card that is white. This is my headphone case for my new in-ear monitors I'm trying. We have a USB-C cable for transferring footage, mostly from like this camera that I'm literally using right now. We have eye drops. I got LASIK in April and so I try to keep eye drops literally everywhere. Haven't needed to use this bottle yet though. And then this is actually little custom attachments that we made for my teleprompter up there. You may have noticed it was covered in felt. I'll show you in a sec, but these attach to the teleprompter so that when I do have to touch the camera, around the camera, etc., I can have different textures that will make different sounds depending on the video I'm doing, rather than metal. <laughs> so I have this fake skin, and this is what I got for like one of my tattoo videos, and I decided to repurpose this in case we need something smooth and skin sounding. We have this fur in case it's like more like hair scratchy or something. It's also good to like attach something like hair extensions too. And then the one that just stays on my teleprompter is the felt one. I'll show you. All right, so if we move over from these pins over to here, Sorry, we are at a weird angle, but you, you gotta bear with me, people. We have my box of extra batteries and lens protectors, okay? Then in here, all of the lens caps of various sizes. We have the actual battery charger just chill in here so we always have a battery charged and then I also keep my lenses that aren't attached to any camera right now I think there's only there's only one I have three cameras and four lenses this one is a fixed lens and that just chills right there this is the 85 millimeter lens I think I've used it in maybe 
one or two videos, but mostly this would be like four photos so far. Okay. All right. That is the second shelf. Look down here. I swear that's all cable managed. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And finally, we're going to move to the back of the cart and the first shelf where my bins are. Let's take a look. So this big bin here holds cables and clamps. We've got labeled bags of each type of cable, and a lot of these were really, really useful to have on hand, like right when I was setting up and still experimenting, figuring out what I needed. Cable ties, iPod, cleaning. Um, but to be honest, I could see the contents of these bags changing, because like now I feel like I grab different cables now that the studio is more set up. In the back here, we have our clamps, and we I use these a ton, so it's nice to have a big basket of those handy. That's all in there. And in this bin, we have all of my most commonly used attachments, adapters, and things like power bricks, etc. So here are all the adapters. I have this like universal screwdriver kit. This is like a mini elbow thing. All the adapters, they're like pretty organized. It's not perfectly organized, but we got power banks, dongles, various things. I do know what's in here, I feel like. <laughs> Stuff I tend to need to grab and use a lot. It's nice to have it close. Etc. On the top here is my toolbox. <laughs> Literally a box, but it, it's working. It's working, so it's like, why change it? It's heinous. Don't judge me. And finally, my little bin of very frequently used Velcro cable ties that lives right here. Alright, so just to reorient you a little bit, I'm sorry if this has been all over the place, the last thing on the cart that I'm going to just go into detail about is the outlet. Just to be clear, I wanted to reiterate how I have things plugged in, and what's plugged in and what needed power. Up here in the USB, this is what's powering the HDMI splitter. Then I have little pieces of tape so I know what's what. This is the power for the teleprompter monitor, right there. This is the roadcaster, the mixer power. This is the camera's AC power. And then this is the Apple TV power. And we have an extra outlet open. Wowie. And then this outlet on the back right of the cart, we have the battery charger plugged in and the field monitor power right there. All right. I can't actually film without lights. So even though these are not attached to the cart, it seems silly not to talk about them. So let's talk about them. And also don't get me wrong, I hit my head all the time on these, but having the lights off of the floor and up on the ceiling is amazing. This light here is really new. It's the Godot G-O-D-O-X UL60BI Silent Bicolor LED Video Light. 
I love it so much. You can change the color temperature of this, but if it were like full RGB, I think I'd lose my mind. It really is silent. I have an Angler quick open 25 inch softbox attachment for it. And I do use a safety cable to make sure that if this attachment fails, I won't die. <laughs> the lights are all mounted on very simple angled C-clamps, which can loosen and be slid on these pipes or taken off completely and moved. The ceiling is not tall, and I am tall, so this is a pretty easy solution for me, even though, like I said, I do hit my head a lot. This softbox over here is one from Amazon I've had since like the dawn of time, but I've changed the light bulbs inside a few times. You can also see my two track lights. These are ones that I got from Home Depot, and those have three bulbs each. Every light bulb in this room is from Govey. If you watched my setup videos in the past, you know I have talked up LifeX over and over. Well, I was misled. I have had my heart broken. I was wrong <laughs> because I recently found out, due to the insanely quiet nature of this room, that my LifeX bulbs were buzzing and I could hear it. And I could hear it in my last film room too, but I could never really figure out what it was. So I went through a science experiment where I ordered like six different smart bulbs from Amazon and tested them out. The Govey ones were the only ones that were silent. So Govey it is, we are a Govey household now. These are how I can do effects. Like in my recent Reagan video where I had the TV playing on my face. And it's how I change the color of my room to make videos look a little different. Alright, that leaves our final topic. The studio manager setup. Let's see what we got. A lot of the time I have someone helping me with my videos. And when they do help, I wanted their experience to be easier and more enjoyable. So when I was building the studio, I thought it would be awesome to include the possibility of having a window and some ports so that I could set that up. This window is heavily sound treated, although if you were to say something loudly, it would come through, like muffled. And I'll show you how I share audio and video from both sides. First, video-wise, back to the splitter I was talking about before. The third HDMI cord that's going from the splitter and down this cable manager goes into an HDMI port on the wall. On the other side of the wall, we have the same thing mirrored. It's essentially just a way to get it through without letting sound leak in. AKA why you couldn't just punch a little hole through the wall. The other piece is the audio snake. This was the solution recommended to me by one of the studio designers, and I got it working. Once again, this is essentially just a port to get it through the wall. If we look on our mixer, here is where you'd plug in headphones. To get it to the other side, we use a cable that has a headphone jack on one end and a male XLR cable on the other. I have this plugged into port 5. I swear, some of the other ones weren't working, but 5 is working, so I'm sticking with 5. And on the other side, a female XLR cable to headphone jack. Now, if I want more than one person to be listening, right now I've just been using a splitter because I had it on hand and I didn't have to buy another cable. Now, in order to let anyone on the other side of the window uh, talk to me through the mixer, I am using an XLR cable from this port here, plugged into the audio snake. And then on the other side, we see another male to female XLR cable running from the snake up to this box, which is the Rolls MS 
111 mic switch. And this is essentially a giant mute button. The final XLR cable goes from the other port on the switch box to the mic. This is my Audio Technica mic. I was using this for streaming a long time ago, and now it gets to be repurposed. So I control on my end if the mic is live or not, but whoever is over there can mute or unmute themselves to talk to me, and I hear it through my mixer. I find this super cool, and it was weirdly, weirdly hard to find information on how to do this online, so I hope this helps someone trying to do something similar. I did have to find the combination of cables that worked. There were a few iterations I had to go through to figure it out. And there you have it. That is my current ASMR cart setup. This was a doozy, and I'm sure things will change a ton, but I do hope that this helps, or that it was at least mildly interesting for those who like to see behind the scenes. I love making content for you all, to say the least. I'm sure you all know that, but I always like to say it again. I don't think I ever would have imagined I would be here, and it's just been so much fun, so thank you so much for watching and for joining me today. I have an ASMR computer <laughs> being built by our talented editor Vest as we speak, so once that's set up, maybe we can do a whole desk tour too. Sleep well everyone, and see you in the next video. Good night. Thank you so much for relaxing with me. If you are not a YouTube Premium member, remember to turn down your volume or turn off your device now to avoid potential post-video ads. Sleep well.